Hi, I'm Amy Callier, Senior Cloud Advocate at Microsoft, and with me is Federico Garini, Senior Cloud Solution Architect. And now we're going over Phase 4, Outbound Internet Connectivity for AVS. So we'll go over the outbound internet co connectivity, options available, and maybe some caveats to consider. So this is the last design area, Federico. What's going to be covered? Uh, yes, Jimmy. Uh, so the network design guide advocates uh, designing uh, outbound internet connectivity after inbound internet connectivity, as we explained uh, in the previous video. And the reason uh, is that if public IPs uh, on the NS60 edge have been selected for inbound connectivity, then they must be used for outbound connectivity too. And in this case, uh, you have essentially no uh, choices, no design choices uh, to make in this phase. Okay, so that's pretty easy. You can't do anything more to design in that case. Yeah, correct. Uh, however, it is important to note uh, that the opposite is not true. If you are not using public IPs on the NS60 edge, then you may still decide to use them for uh, outbound connectivity only. And uh, this is uh, explained or summarized in the flowchart uh, that uh, is available in the last section of the network design guide. Okay. Can you quickly summarize those options that are available? Yeah, sure. Sure, Amy. Um, th the options uh, can be seen in the Azure portal, and the Network Design Guides uh, Guide includes uh, screenshots uh, for uh, the portal tile that allows users to choose, uh, as uh, you can see here. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, uh, outbound connectivity is uh, about uh, source mapping connections uh, initiated by AVS virtual machines. The easiest option uh, is to let the platform do that on your behalf. That's perfect uh, when you do not need to stay in control of which or how many IP addresses are used for source NAT. This is referred to as a managed NAT in the Azure portal. The other option is to use public IPs on the NS60 edge as a SNAP pool. This allows you to decide which SNAP pool to use and to do more advanced things, such as using different IPs for snapping different connections. This can be done by means of proper NS60 configuration performed directly in ABS. Finally, you can implement SNAT in Azure. To do so, a default route must be announced from Azure to ABS. And this default route can even be propagated by Azure when a default route is received by Azure from uh, on-prem over an extra source circuit. SNAT can be implemented with Azure Firewall if you prefer a first-party solution. Alternatively, you can deploy uh, NVAs and configure them to SNAT AVS connections. This option is a common choice, especially in brownfield scenarios where customers may want to leverage pre-existing Azure Edge devices. Great. I mean, thanks for going over all these design phases throughout the network design guide. It seems to really walk you through each step. I'm sure many people will find this very helpful in creating um, a proper connection throughout their Azure VMware solution design. So thanks again for joining me. Make sure to watch all the videos that we have included and those Azure landing zones. And thank you, Federico. Thank you, Amy.